Well, this is a tutorial I never expected to be making. In this video, I'm going to be covering a killer new feature to Skype for content creators and live streamers. Yeah, you heard me right, Skype. They've been kind of doing some work behind the scenes to try to regain some of their market share and put out some new features that are actually useful for people. And I actually have two different features I'm going to cover in two separate videos that are specifically geared towards content creators and can be useful for other people as well. And I'm pretty freaking stoked for what people can do with it. And so we're going to be starting here today with the ability to send NDI streams from your Skype calls per call participant. It is really freaking cool. So you'll be able to send separate NDI streams, which if you don't know, is a uh, network video streaming codec designed by NewTek, which allows you to basically send your video feed nearly losslessly over your network or within your same computer to be picked up by a live streaming program such as OBS Studio, vMix, and so on. And I've previously shown this off as a way to get games from one computer to the other without the need for capture cards. And now you'll be able to do it with your Skype calls. And if you're in a multiple person group chat, you'll be able to do that per individual host or per, you know, individual guest rather in your call. <laughs> it's just, it's really cool. I'm actually really impressed. Now there is one thing that it won't let you uh, bring in your own webcam feed and you'll still have a conflicting issue if you try to send your webcam to both OBS Studio and uh, Skype and I'm told that they're trying to figure out a way to work around that but really that's a Windows device access issue you know you can only send a video feed to one device or one software at a time that's been an issue with Windows forever that's just how device acquisition works so I don't necessarily see that fix coming so now this new feature is still currently in beta or alpha or some form of preview state primarily reserved for people on Windows Insider builds I will have a link to download the preview in the description down below, but keep in mind it is a beta. It is something they're testing. They do have a place where you can give feedback and they're just looking for people to test it and make sure it works and things like that as with a lot of Windows features. And so pretty cool. This is the desktop app version. This is actually not the UWP, the Windows Store version of Skype. I was actually concerned about that. I was like, am I going to be required to use that version? But it actually doesn't work with the UWP app yet. They're still trying to make that work. And so you will be pleased to know that this is actually the desktop version, which is kind of neat. Let's jump in the tutorial and check it out. Once you have OBS ready to go, you need to get Skype ready to go. So in Skype, click the three dots for more, go to setting, go to calling, click advanced, and then allow NDI usage. NDI is a streaming protocol that allows you to broadcast things nearly losslessly over your network and allows you to pick them up and basically treat anything as an external webcam. So you can sit here and hit allow NDI usage and then close your settings and now start a call. Now when I answer my call, we have some video going. My webcam is blocked because I have it looped into OBS, but now it is showing up here on Skype that I have a call. You can see me in the side view here. I have this running on my other computer. And now when I go into OBS, I can click to add a new source and we're going to add an NDI source. We'll call this Skype one. And you can see it automatically picks up from my source name, which is my computer's name. And then the Skype conversation I am having bandwidth mode. Highest is highest quality. Of course, lowest is uh, super low quality, or you could just pull in the audio. If you only want to do an audio video, we'll leave it on highest and you can mess with the other settings per normal. Click OK. Give it a second and wham, we have our other video feed and this will send separate video feeds for everybody who is on a group call so if you have a multi-person group call then it will have everyone's setup going all at once and then we do have here a separate audio stream for that skype client as well however we have no audio coming through because audio is not set up correctly on that skype let me fix that Now, when I was originally testing this with myself on my other computer, I was unable to get the audio from that Skype part of the Skype call in via the NDI source. I can't really figure out why. I can't really reproduce it. Something with the way it was set up at the time. I've since gone on and did a group an another group call so that I could test two different sources at once, and both of them were coming in via NDI. So audio works fine. If you hear me mention it, that was just a weird issue or glitch or just some screw up on my configuration with that initial call. And now we have it ready to go with a live feed from Skype. It will have that little Skype watermark in there. I don't know that you can get rid of it. It does want to let you know that Skype is there. 
and then over on the person who is on the other end of the call, it does pop up a little banner for them letting you know that you've enabled NDI and that the person on the other end of the call could potentially be recording the call, which is important for privacy concerns. And then if for whatever reason you're in the middle of a call and you wish to stop NDI, you do have a button here to hit that, which will cut off the feed and should make it stop working. Although that doesn't appear to be working yet because I do still have an NDI feed going here. And I have confirmed that if you are running Skype and OBS or whatever, if you're running Skype on one PC and you still want the NDI stream of the Skype call on another PC, where, you know, how you would normally send an NDI signal, that does still work. It does still broadcast it over the network that will use bandwidth, whereas locally in the same computer, you're not using any network bandwidth. So it's nearly, you know, it's nearly lagless and not causing you any network issues, but you do have the option of sending that straight out to another computer as well. Something I did want to mention is that if you don't have any video feed coming in at all, you will get a nice little blue screen here, which could be useful for a background or just to indicate that you have someone connected on Skype. This feature is really, really cool. And I'm actually really excited to do some interview-esque and, you know, podcast-esque kind of streams and recordings and setups where I have people on as a guest and can quickly bring them in via NDI. No more awkwardly... Uh, screen capping Skype like in my previous tutorial nothing like that like this is the easiest and best way to do it and it is much higher quality than the screen capture methods methods in the next video I will be showing you another way you could record your Skype calls and do interview kind of things with even less work required and it is another cool feature that they're adding so stay tuned for that otherwise hit the like button if you enjoyed this tutorial subscribe for more awesome tech education consider contributing on patreon where you can get early access to videos behind the scenes stuff get to give feedback into videos things like that you can also do the same thing via clicking the join button next to the subscribe button down below otherwise i'm Vox, and i'll see you in the next one